Hey guys, we have here our Windows laptop and in this video we want to explain to you how to run a program when Windows resumes from sleep or hibernation. So at first we're going into the lower left corner where we're typing in task scheduler. And once we started this application we should see the following window. And now here we see this task scheduler library and here's already a couple of folders with different company names. And so in order to keep everything nice and organized, we're going to create another folder where we are going to put in our own tasks. Okay, so now that we created a new folder, we're going to right click on it. And here we're going to select create task and make sure not to mistake that with the create basic task. You want to select create task. And so now in the following pop-up that we see here, we're going to give our new task a name. So it should be something descriptive that we know what the task is for. So I'm going to call this here wake up task. And then we can also fill in the description just to give it a little bit more information about what this task is doing. And now we can leave the uh, general tab and we're going to switch over to triggers. And here we're going to the bottom of the screen and we're going to select new. And here we can uh, define the trigger that we want to uh, create. So right now this is here selected to be uh, on schedule. Uh, that's not what we want. We are going to uh, open up the drop down menu and we're going to uh, select here on an event. Select this one. And then uh, we're going to select custom. And here we're going to select new event filter. So this brings us to a new pop up. And in here we're going to select the uh, checkbox for information. And then we can uh, look at the event logs drop down menu. We're going to select this one. And here we're going to search for the systems check mark. So we're going to select this here system. Then we can close this drop down menu. And then we are going to open up the second drop down menu here the event sources. And we're going to go very far down to a P. So there's a huge list of items in here. We're going to go to P and we are going to look for power troubleshooter. So that should be someplace and we're going to select the uh, check mark here. And then we can close this drop down menu. And then you see this next field where it says all event ideas and we're just going to put in one. That's the only thing we have to do. We just put the one in there. And then at this point we can select OK to close this pop up. And we're going to do the same thing here in the other pop up. So we're going to select OK here also. And now uh, we have created our trigger. So then next we're going to uh, switch to the actions tab and here we're going to also select new and now we can define here what is supposed to happen when our trigger gets activated. So there's another action drop down menu where only the first option actually still works. So that is start a program. The other two options are already deprecated and they won't work anymore. So and now the, uh, in the bottom here we can select now the program or the script that's supposed to start. In our example here, we're just going to start Notepad because that's then really easy to see that the uh, trigger is working later on. And if you want to, you can also give it some additional uh, parameters. And now we can select OK here as well. And then the last step we should do is go to the next tab under Conditions. We find here the option Power and under there there's two check marks. And you want to make sure to disable both of those check marks before we press OK. Now that the your entire setup is completed, it's time to close the test scheduler again. And now we can go ahead and try it out if it works. So let us first close the lid of our laptop here so that the computer goes to sleep. And then a couple of seconds later, we're going to open the lid back up. The computer is going to start. And a couple of seconds later, there is the notepad automatically started with our test scheduler task. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions or comments, then please leave a message below.